Hello and welcome back to Understanding Crypto. My name is Eve and here we decipher crypto to the understanding of anybody. As we look on this chart, this is the dollar on the monthly time frame and we are going as far back as the 1980s right here. So this right here is the 1980s basically and uh, yeah, nobody looks at this chart. Yeah, it's only us here. We try to understand if we are really in the right asset. That's why we look at time frames like these. It lets us know what's really going to happen when people just say, hey, Bitcoin is going to a million dollars. Uh, you know what the past is all about you know what the macro picture looks like so you have a better idea on what may happen than any other person who is just looking at the daily or the four hourly time frame so it's always important to look at the macro picture now we can see that the dollar has been in this downward sloping trend line right here or generally it's just been in this uh, descending wedge and the target for this wedge is somewhere around 130 right here now, that is actually where I would guess that may be the crypto market's bottom. Um, judging from here, if we just invert this chart, this is what you would usually call a double uh, top, yes? This is what everybody would say it's, uh, you know, a double top. The same like you would have on BTC chart on the weekly time frame. Like this was the all time high and this was the first time we came close to that. So you remember this chart on BTC, yeah? And everybody's saying that, hey, that's a double top. Okay. If we say that that's a double top on BTC, then we must be able to say that this is also a double top on the dollar, except that this is the inverted chart. So that's a double bottom, meaning that this thing is headed now, um, it's not like I always watch these charts. It's uh, somewhat of recent that I started to pay a lot of attention to this macro um, pictures. You know, um, it's not everybody that does this. This is scary to look at because when you look from here, you talk about stuff that nobody would believe. Yeah. If you say that, hey, BTC is going to 3K, nobody will believe you. Nobody believes you. Why? Because they don't look at the macro picture. They are looking at what's going to happen in the next 30 minutes. And in the next 30 minutes, BTC may move by uh, 2%. So they are used to the idea of BTC only moving by 2%, 3%. And from here to 3K may mean a 60 or 70% move, which is not something they've seen before. They are used to only hearing that, hey, it's going to happen like that in a very long time. But they are not doing analysis on higher time frames. So it makes makes no sense to them to believe that it's going to go to that level. Will it for sure go there? No, but the charts do suggest that it could very well go there. This right here was the 2017 bull market top. That's where the dollar was actually forming a bottom right here. And this other part right here was the 2021 bull market top. What actually got me interested here is that this particular region, this region where everybody was saying that uh, BTC is going to 100K, well, that's the exact time that the dollar was trying to break out of this bull flag. You know, so when you look at this, it really, really shifts your perspective of, you know, um, what's going to happen. Because you are looking at a potential breakout to the upside on the dollar, and everybody in the marketplace is saying that BTC is going to 100K and beyond. Even around here, where we would say that uh, this was a potential retest of the trend line, what was going on? That was the 2017 bull market top where everybody lost money. And even here, where the dollar was testing this resistance, which is where we would normally exercise some caution, everybody was saying that the dollar, that uh, BTC is going to 100K. And then the dollar broke out of that bull flag and came up to here. That now was the 2022 uh, local bottom at the 2.618 right here. So we see how these things work. Now it came down to here to the 0 0.786 Fibonacci level. And ever since then, it has been going to the upside. Now, after this uh, bottom, which is the top, the 31K top on BTC, the dollar has been going up ever since. Now, as I've always uh, told you, when you see the price come to the 0 0.786 Fibonacci level, the point where you would want to de-risk yourself would be the 0 0.236 yeah 0 0.236 
this you will not find on any textbook by the way it's uh off of my back testing so you will want to de-risk yourself at the 0 0.236 because there is a higher likelihood that price will bounce back from there and come back to the downside however you want to be seeing getting some points of confluences as you go uh, to that level because you might as well just stop out at the 0 0.382 which is what the dollar might be doing right here so uh, if the dollar can can top out here which will mean a negative close of this candle that's we will want this monthly candle to come back below to close below this uh, 0 0.382 right here to confirm a potential move back to the downside to where back to the 0 0.782 fibonacci level so we will want to catch the 0 0.782 uh, 786 fibonacci level around here or the golden pocket which will be somewhere around here so these are the two levels that you would want to see in a possible retracement if this thing does not succeed to close above this 0 0.382 right here if it does you would want um you would want to uh, sell around this level right here at the 0 0.236. That 0 0.236 will be very close to the 0 0.786 of this particular candle. Now, I've explained this before. When you see a candle that looks like so, you want um, a retracement of that candle. Yeah, you, you don't want the candle to be bare naked. They always have retracements. Every candle will, will have a retracement. A candle like this one that did not have a retracement you had this candle coming to fill that candle i made a video here on youtube i think i have a video on filling uh the candles i have a video here on youtube i will leave it in the description filling candlesticks so you always want a retracement of every candle yeah it is on that retracement that you seek to buy or sell depending on um, the move so in this case you would want to sell as price comes back to fill this particular candle if it cannot succeed to go uh, above this 0 0.382 right here for the monthly this month of uh, october then we will expect that this thing comes back down to these other fibonacci levels right here so this is how we get the levels yeah you take from the bottom of this candle to the top of the candle we're using candle closes on higher time frames why because that's what um it's most efficient we're using candle closes on the higher time frames if you don't know exactly where the candle close might be then you use the line chart no with this one we cannot get it but if you were following something that looks like this if you were to get the levels of something that looks like this you will take from this bottom to this top right here but with the line chart we can't get that on individual candles so on individual candles you have to just be careful and place it on the open right here and place your uh, other level at the close right here yes somewhere around here so if we cannot get a positive close above this uh, 0 0.382 which i think we may not actually i think we will come back down from there i think we will create something that looks like an evening star right here well, the evening star will not be complete if we don't have a candle coming back down here. But anyway, I think we will create some sort of doji around this level right here. I don't think we go higher because on the intraday time frames, I have um, some analysis to suggest that we come back for a retracement. That retracement on this higher time frame will mean a doji. So, yeah, you have to learn how to understand how intraday time frames affect the um higher time frames so basically that's what we are waiting on uh, the dollar if we can have a positive close right here above the 0 0.382 of this uh, monthly candle of this monthly time frame then we will expect that the dollar tops out anywhere around here and by that we are really meaning that it will most likely top out right here this is something i've explained um before now this video will be long so um 
take some coffee or something and i'm making the video in a way actually i'll try to make these videos in a way that you can just listen to them like you don't have to watch me speak and stuff all right so when you have a move that goes to the upside like so yeah and you have a retracement like this this retracement is where you want to catch now this might be the 0 0.618 or the 0 0.786 fibonacci level now 0 0.618 or yes 0 0.618 is a 61.8 percent retracement of the move to the upside 0 0.786 fibonacci level is a 78 percent retracement of the move to the upside which means that if institutions bought right here and they took price up to here they sell to retail because retail gets interested right here yes but then they come back to buy at a 78 percent discount they can also buy right here at a 61.8 percent discount of this move to the upside ideally you want to sell as it goes back to about a 23 percent uh, discount to this upside right here why because a lot of retail bought around here and they will sell off when price comes back here now this has to do with a lot of things because sometimes it will come back up here and just continue going to the upside so again you have to look for confluences yeah but that's just the idea so around this level right here i hope you can see that so around this level right here this is where institutions will be buying yeah they're sold off to retail around here at the 2.618 2.618 is maximum top mostly in this bear market in other markets in like in the past bull market the top is somewhere around the four fib we will get to that whenever the bull market comes so basically if we cannot see uh, uh, a positive close on this monthly right here on the dollar then we will expect that the dollar comes back as uh, comes back to retrace this particular candle so this particular candle inside of this candle which is to the upside you will have something that looks like this this thing will then now come to retrace that candle which will look like this which will be a retracement right here a retracement around here and then a move to the upside to complete this move basically whenever it does come here that's where we can actually see a gigantic move on mr btc in my opinion now there's a chance that it comes here and breaks so again we need confluences at all times we need confluences that's why you would hear me say something today and tomorrow i'm changing it it's because there is no guarantee that it's going to hold this particular zone but for now you trade with what you see yeah or you invest based on what you see that thing can change when it changes you have to adjust with it now the overall chart is showing us that all of this that we are talking about all of this that we are um, mentioning right here is outside of that trend line remember the trend line outside of this so all of this that we are talking about inside or say yes inside here is outside of this outside of this breakout and classic breakout and retest right here and where is all of that headed it's all headed up here are we saying that it's guaranteed to go there no it may not go there it might just plummet from here but for now that's what it's telling us it's telling us that from current price the dollar still has about still has about a 22 percent move to make to the upside now Note that the other time the dollar uh, pumped by 4% and BTC plummeted by 20, uh, I think, yeah, it was 20, 22% actually. 22%, yes, 22%. So you may do the math. We still have some ways to go with BTC. So long as this thing is going to go here, because for now it is showing us that it is still headed there. There is no way to know if it must go there. There's really no way. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because some people will be like, hey, do you still believe in 3K? 
And the reason these people ask this is because they are super focused on, you know, the shorter time frames. They cannot see past the daily time frames. They're just interested on the daily, the uh, five minute, the 30 minutes. They, they want stuff fast. So um, this type of data does not interest them. But it's very important to always have an eye on this time frame. Not that you really have to. Well, you can always watch here because I'll be doing updates on this and um, we will talk about where we are because this is the only way we get to know. The reason why inverting charts is good is because it challenges your bias. And I really urge all of you to do the same. When you think it's going to go up, invert the chart and see if you would think that it's going to go down. Because when you think it's going down on an inverted chart, then on the regular chart, that's going up. So on this chart, where do you think the dollar is headed? It's headed down because it has broken a key trend line here and rejected from that trend line once again. So this thing is going down. But by it going down, it means it's actually going up on the regular chart. And that means BTC and crypto is going down. At least that's what it tells us right now. We have no other thing to suggest that it's going um, straight down from here. At least that's what we see right here. Again, it's very important to look at these time frames because you will catch the biggest moves ever. Ideally, we would want to see this thing retrace up here, but we are watching to see if it will close a monthly candle above this level right here. If it can close a monthly candle above this 0.382 right here. If it can't, then this thing will most likely be headed back here for another move to the upside to this 0.236 right here. Highly possible situations, but the ideal place where you would want to uh, maybe buy into BTC again is when the dollar is up here. When you see it up here, that may be a good time to buy into BTC because around that time, BTC should be at a local bottom. Now, let's go to the SPX. Let's go to the SPX. Um, I have been very, very accurate on my predictions on the, the S&P 500 for the past couple of uh, months, actually, like super accurate. But the problem is that BTC seems to not be following the SPX um, so far. So it only follows the SPX when it's coming down instead. So when the SPX is uh, plummeting, that's when BTC follows it. And uh, when it's going up, BTC does not follow it. So it's like no need doing analysis on the S&P 500. But if you guys would want me to uh, continue updating on the S&P, kindly let me know in the comment, uh, comment section of this video. I will continue to do so if uh, you guys are interested in it. Maybe 10 people interested would do. Now, we can see that it even came up to this region right here. This is on the monthly. Let's switch to the weekly time frame. We can see that the SPX came up to this particular region up here. Let's take this one like so. Okay, we can see that the SPX came uh, to this region up here, which is the 0.786 Fibonacci level, yeah? And then if you invert the chart, it will look like so. I hope you guys can see that, yeah? If you invert the chart, it will look like so. So see all of this move to the, uh, it's actually the downside in the regular chart, but see it as a single candle. It will tie with the same idea which I just showed you on the dollar, yeah? When you see a move that looks like so, expect a retracement either to the 0 0.618 or the 0 0.786 Fibonacci level. 
after that you want another maybe another retest there and still you want a move to the upside the point where you would want to de-risk yourself will be at the 0 0.236 but you could also have a rejection at the 0 0.5 or the 0 0.382 as well so you want to see that type of move with the spx right here however in the intraday time frame i do think that the s p could still move back down to here and regular chart that will be up instead so like so that will be like uh, that will actually be up instead so the other day i forecasted that the s p will be coming down to this region right here i'll just have the picture somewhere around this uh, video for you to see i was saying that the s uh, the the s p will come down into this my lines right here and will most likely bounce from there on the daily time frame this thing seems overvalued overvalued with a bearish divergence actually so the s p could be coming back down very soon actually yes could be coming back down now again the same principle you can use here and we also see something which i didn't even see before making this video we can see the what do you call this the a b equals to c d yeah you take this from here to here and with this you're using the wicks and you put like so it can go below that and uh, it actually appears overvalued on the daily with a bearish divergence clear bearish divergence where you have price going to the upside the indicator is already overvalued and at the same level with the past indicator uh, level right here and price is not representing the exact same thing it means that the momentum to the upside right here is already exhausted without price going above this other high right here so there is a very good likelihood that this thing is forming a lower high this was the high this is a lower high right here and this is uh, possibly a lower high forming right here and we ha do have a gap that has not been filled yet now has it no it hasn't so it will most possibly fill this gap right here and retrace this particular candle always expect candles to be retraced most likely they will be retraced so you'd have like a retracement right here and uh, yes that's where you'd want to see if this thing will plummet or not on the weekly time frame it appears undervalued so the weekly time frame is giving us a signal and the daily is giving us another signal it is because of this weekly time frame that i do think that this thing will make its way back to this level right here and that will most possibly give us something like a double top honestly i, I don't see it going um far up again why because it's sitting at the 0 0.786 fibonacci level taken from this rally right here this all of this rally right here you take your fibonacci from here to here it gives you the 0 0.786 fibonacci level right here this is where you want to be buying but in this case that's the top so that's where you want to be selling and if this actually collapses from here then it's 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 carnage it's going to be crazy because uh yeah that will be a lower high to this one a lower high to this one which is a very good double top so yeah uh yeah we just have to be clear with the facts there's a chance that it goes even way higher but i don't see that happening honestly i don't see that happening for now i would expect that it fills that candle on the daily so we could still have a move right up to here and this is something i want to uh, show you let me look for um, a daily candle no we can't do it with this particular weekly candle okay so when you see a candle like so this is how i catch the you know i usually would give you uh, send you some charts in the telegram group and you'll be like okay uh how did i catch that particular entry when you see a candle that looks like so this is on on bitcoin it behaves a bit different but it's actually better on bitcoin but i'm just going to show you here before we go further so you take from this top when you see a candle that looks like so let's say you want to go short yeah you take fibonacci from this top and this works best on the daily time frame and you put right here at the bottom so from the top 
to the bottom. That's where, when you want to go short, you are taking Fibonacci from the top to the bottom. When you want to go long, you are taking Fibonacci from the bottom to the top. So you want to go short as price retraces back up. You don't want to go short at market. You want to go short on the retracement or you want to buy or sell on the retracement, not at market because it will most likely retrace. Sometimes it may not. Sometimes it will just go straight down or straight up, but you want to go short or long on the retracement and you only want to do that on the retracement of the 0 0.78 uh, 786 Fibonacci level or the retracement of the 0 0.618. You only want to go uh, buy or sell on th at these Fibonacci levels. Why? Because the invalidation point of that short must be above this uh, open, the, the open of this uh, candle right here. No, the yes, the open of this candle right here. So if I was going uh, short right here, if I was going short, um, say I thought price is going to go way lower, yeah, and I wanted to go short, I must only go short around here. Sometimes I would only go short at the 0 0.786 Fibonacci level or at the 0 0.618. Now, by short, I don't literally mean going to short the market. I'm talking about selling or buying. So you only want to buy or sell on that retracement. So if I wanted to sell right here, I will only want to sell at the 0 0.618 or the 0 0.786 Fibonacci level. It is better to sell at the 0 0.786 Fibonacci level. That way you have a tighter stop loss. But if you are selling at the 0 0.618, this, the invalidation point is still this candle close right here. So you have a wider stop loss. Now, some people would go and sell around here. Yes, around here. But the problem is your invalidation is still this top right here. So you have a, a very big stop loss again. The best way to go about it is only to sell if it does come right here. I'm just telling you this now because I sent a lot of uh, messages on Telegram and I wonder if you understand what my thought process is. The important thing about um, investing, trading and all of this is the thought process. It's not just the, the idea of saying, hey, uh, BTC is going to 3000. So uh, what? Can you repeat that? You know, can you repeat? Can you see again in the future if it's going to go to some level? You will not see it if it was just a gamble. So it's important to know exactly why someone is thinking that it's going to some level. It's not just about the levels. It's about the idea, the thought process behind it. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the idea on the S&P 500. I still see a move up to uh, here. And on this particular candle, we can look for uh, where we would want to sell on this candle. We see that this candle was retraced already, which you can see by the wick right here. We see that this one was retraced by this other candle coming up to this level right here. And we are seeing a retracement of this particular candle right now on the weekly time frame. But the weekly is undervalued, which means that this thing could still go up but the daily is overvalued. So it reduces the chances of this thing just blowing uh, straight up because the daily is a faster time frame than the weekly. So what would we expect from here? We already see that this thing has come right up to the, that should be about the 0 0.5 Fibonacci level. Yes, exactly, the 0 0.5 Fibonacci level. Let me put that in yellow so that you see. So th that's the 0 0.5 Fibonacci level where we've had a retracement um, on this thing. There's a chance that we still go up to the 0 0.618 and the 0 0.786. If you have a candle that closes above the 0 0.786 Fibonacci level, it will most likely go even higher. That's a way to confirm if maybe price is going to go lower or higher. If you have a candle closing above the 0 0.786 Fibonacci level, 
price will most likely go higher if it comes there and leaves a week and comes right back down like so even going below the 0 0.5 fibonacci level price will most likely continue lower so that's uh, something to learn as well now we cannot dismiss the fact that this thing looks a lot like a descending um channel right here yes let's uh take these out and uh put this like so let's go to the daily time frame so that we can actually um catch that thing let's see yes it looks a lot like a descending channel actually a descending broadening wedge descending broadening wedges okay so we would want to see this candle this uh, gap here get filled and um maybe a retracement back to this level right here i would actually expect this thing to go and retest this trend line around here yes i would actually like to see a retest of that trend line around here so it would be something that looks like so if the s p is finally going to go even higher then this retracement if it does go up to this level right here then this retracement should not go below this level if it does this thing will crash badly so on the idea that it continues higher if you are an s p bull on the idea that it continues higher you would want to see it bounce somewhere around here why do I put around here? Because if it does go up to here, this will be the 0 0.618 Fibonacci, the 0 0.786 Fibonacci level. So I'm always looking for those levels in any rally or dump. Yeah. And if you see this, then this thing will most likely go even higher. Anyway, that's the idea on the S&P. We are looking for a retracement still to the upside a retracement that can go to somewhere around four thousand four hundred dollars and uh, most likely we will expect this thing to come back to the downside now um usually bitcoin follows the s p uh but this time around uh investors do not want to invest in riskier assets so the crypto market capitalization has been the same throughout this bear market basically and uh, we've not been having any more um, any money coming into the space so every rally that you see is simply um, turned over money from another altcoins rally for example uh, I think Litecoin rallied yeah and uh, BNB actually rallied was actually the first one of the first coins to rally and retest the April highs the 2022 April highs and um, litecoin rallied prior to its halving and then started to plummet well conveniently xrp rallied xlm uh, xlm rallied as well now these coins are not rallying because maybe we have more money coming into crypto no 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 they are not that's not what is going on what's going on is investors smart investors anyway they are or institutions because it's not people like you and me that are controlling price institutions as are, are, are pumping some coins so they, they take money from their investment in say uh, litecoin they take their gains go to pump um, xrp because maybe they were in a big loss we as retail we fomo we go and buy from them and we hope that it goes to five dollars and then they sell to us xrp starts to plummet we panic and we sell off as well they go to the next coin and it rallies abruptly and that's what is going on in this bear market they are exiting their uh, their holdings by taking profits in one coin and pumping the next one retail goes to the next one to say okay i got unlucky with xrp perhaps i'll be lucky with uh, verge the retail goes to verge and retail gets uh, slaughtered they go to the next one what was the next one the next one was um this was this was maker they go to maker and i was uh, like warning about uh, maker's uh, dump and maker straight up dumped without me even catching the top i was trying to catch uh the top of uh, maker I, yes it's maker the one that uh, means uh, the die stable coin on ethereum so that's basically what they're doing that's uh, basically what they're doing so institutions are not really interested in crypto um for now 
like right now they are not they are not really interested we are not seeing uh more influx of capital into the space all what we're seeing is uh institutions pumping their bags from gains of um, other investments and that's how i believe that they brought about pepe i think pepe was orchestrated by institutions you know uh, there is no way that you have a meme coin random meme coin um, that launches today and tomorrow no in two days i went to pepe's uh, twitter account and i did a lot of research there i found out that they launched the coin and in two days it got listed on centralized exchanges it's not normal if it was that easy everybody will be rich they uh, we're just looking for a way to bring in capital into the space to garner retail attention and the people who were never interested in crypto came into crypto then so uh, that that was actually a good move by them I would say so yeah basically they are not coming into crypto anymore this rally on the S&P going back to the 0 0.618 and the 0 0.786 uh, Fibonacci level would have been about forty seven thousand dollars if BTC did the same but it didn't. It didn't do the same now, did it? It just stayed at the bottom and uh, we have been in this agony and anguish ever since. So simply, this is my uh, idea on the S&P 500. Notice this uh, stuff right here, this uh, pattern right here. This is a pattern which I talk about a lot of the time, the ascending broadening wedge. If you go to Bitcoin's weekly time frame, you will see this same uh, this same type of uh, structure on Bitcoin's weekly time frame. Bitcoin's weekly time frame, you will see uh, a structure that looks like so. Impulse, retracement, impulse again, come back, retest of this uh, level right here, go again like so, impulse again here and start to plummet. That is the same thing that makes me think BTC goes to 3K. We have been following the pattern ever since and we have nothing to suggest that it won't follow it. At least for now. So uh, when this happens, by my analysis and backtesting, it should come up to this level, back to this level right here. Which is what I think, conveniently actually, that's interesting. Which is what I think the S&P will do, come back to this level around 4 thousand four hundred so if you are invested in this be careful with that zone because it will be retesting this resistance uh, line from this highs that it formed here in july of 2023 okay let's go to the total crypto market cap chart total crypto market cap chart the reason why i am looking at the total crypto market cap chart is uh, because well it involves all cryptocurrencies and after this i will not need to go look at bitcoin's macro uh, picture because it's basically the same thing the other day on tiktok i made a video showing how this total crypto market cap chart forecasted its own top from this uh 2017 2018 uh, bull market so if you take this trend based Fibonacci and you apply to the 2019 bear market 2018 2019 bear market and even come to the 2020 uh, pandemic drop right here which was already leading us into the bull market we will see that this thing forecasted its own top at the 4.2 to 4.618 Fibonacci level right here so in the bull market we should be watchful for this uh, Fibonacci levels because some of these coins top out at the 4 fib around the 4 fib so if uh, we were into this type of macro analysis in the past bull market we could have forecasted that top right there now it's interesting to see how when it topped right there before it even topped it was bouncing at this um at this 1.618 Fibonacci level and that 1.618 has also been marking the top of this bear market the top of the current bear market that we are in right now the same 1.618 taken from 2018 to 2019 inside of here i get that from something that looks like a double bottom like so yes the rule is the second bottom must be higher than the first bottom so you take your trend based fibonacci and you place in three so one two and three the third touch will be at this base right here it should give you the ideal top of the current 
uh, structure. So the first peak will be somewhere around the 1.618. The second will be here. That's according to this bear market anyway. But in the bull market, this will be different. So I'm constantly back testing this to see which one is working at what times. In this current bear market, most of the coins that we know top out at the 2.618 or the 3 fib this 2.618 or 3 fib right here so one two three and you get this so that's what we got right here with the crypto market all time high when we come to this monthly time frame right here we will see that if you take your fibonacci from this bullish engulfing candlestick pattern right here i use this bullish engulfing pattern because it is outside of this bull flag yeah so we have already exited the structure we had a bull flag that looks like so and then the engulfing candlestick that leads to the rally we take our Fibonacci uh, measurement from there. So we take the regular Fibonacci from here, regular Fibonacci from here to the all time high right here. And it gives us that uh, 0 0.786 Fibonacci level. If we put this in the line chart, you will see it clearly like so. So we leave from here to the all time high right here. And it gives us this 0 0.786 Fibonacci level. Crazy I wasn't looking at this at the, the time when the markets plummeted to this level right here. I was busy looking at the intraday time frame. So as we mentioned before, if you buy in right here, where you want to de-risk yourself completely will be at the 0 0.7, at the 0 0.236 Fibonacci level. So let's look for that 0 0.236 Fibonacci level right here. 0.236 okay cool now this is the 0.236 fibonacci level right here but as we mentioned it could as well just stop at the 0.382 fibonacci level right here so these zones you want to be careful with them you also want to be careful even with the 50 percent retracement could we also crash from here of course it can happen uh, let me put that in yellow actually yes i would completely de-risk myself if it goes to the 0 0.236 now the reason why i would not be waiting for the 0 0.236 for this particular chart not that the all this all uh changes with the scenario yeah the reason why i would not be waiting for this 0 0.236 right here is because of an unretraced candle where is that candlestick let's go to candles okay cool now we see this particular candle even on bitcoin i've shown you this particular candle it's somewhere around 35k actually um this particular candle was not retraced this one was retraced this one the 0 0.236 of this candle was somewhat retraced of the this candle from the all-time high so if we take from there to here okay yes it was actually retraced 0 0.236 of this particular candle retraced this one also retraced this one might even have a 0 0.382 retraced 0 0.382 should be retraced let's see 0 0.382 uh, not not quite not quite retraced right here but now this one was not retraced at all so my bit my bit my uh, idea basically is that we retraced this particular candle before a big crash remember selling for a mega crash is a lot more like shorting the markets because you are selling high to buy low from here i don't have sufficient data to say that we crash down to this level right here but if we did go up as high as here that may bring the confluences i need to suggest that we crash now it's the exact same thing that happened even here it's the exact same thing that happened even here now this would need that you see patterns easily if you can't see them easily it will be a bit difficult to understand this because i am constantly just shifting between um candlesticks and um, ideas so if you take this from here to here yes this particular candle right here you will see that we crashed like so we crashed like so retraced and then continue to crash so that's how the move always is you want a rally a retracement and another rally you want a move to the downside a retracement and another move to the downside you don't want 
a move to the downside and a continuous move to the downside. It can happen, but you want a retracement to some sort of Fibonacci level to say that, okay, I think this thing is going to continue going down. Why? Because when it does come up for that retracement, that's the point where you would judge to see if truly it will continue to go down to here. You can't just assume that it must go down from here and much less around here where you have no information um, about it going down here. Can it happen? Of course. But simply you need some data to suggest that that's going to happen. So basically I would be expecting a move still to this particular level right here. And in my opinion, like my own opinion, I'm not saying that this is on the chart or anything. I think the move up here could be caused the move up to this candle. Note that it can actually surpass it, but I would like to see a move into that candle with a wick to the upside. In my opinion, I think this thing could end up like some XRP pump and dump scenario where XRP pumped to $80 and dumped. Yeah, I think that could be the same type of thing that happens here. Note that we have not taken out this low right here. We have not taken this low and we have not taken this low. So we have no nothing to suggest that we are going to go straight to the downside and uh, equally yeah we have nothing to suggest that we are just going to go straight up you could define this as a lower high to this one but yet we are in a range right here which is a lot like the xrp thing because we were in a range for a very long time we spiked to the upside came back down and now we have started to plummet so what I'm saying is just be careful if you hear that BlackRock ETF and stuff, go check your chart on the monthly time frame and see how price is reacting with this particular candle right here because that may be the exit liquidity. Note that everybody that bought in around here, everybody that bought here, most of them anyway, they would be in losses. So um, when price comes back to their break even point, yeah, or even close to that, they will most likely sell off because they experienced pain and they've been in that pain all along right here. So most of them will be selling off when price does come back up here. And another move to the downside right here will be fueled with a lot of people selling off. So um, all I'm saying is just be careful. If price continues to plummet from here, well, we have no other choice it's just to buy as it goes to the downside yeah but if it does go up i will most likely react by selling off when it does come up here depending on what we see then we will make an update if that ever happens but for now we are in a range right here and uh, there is really nothing much to say um, some people on twitter are saying that hey we are going to come back to 20k we are going to come and retest this week right here but what's the proof for that this is actually a bullish engulfing uh, candlestick yeah which is supposed to be bullish for the markets a reversal sign if you may um and uh, the fourth quarter is usually bullish october and november are usually bullish months well september was usually a bearish month that turned out to be bullish this time could it mean that we are actually reversing which months get to be bullish or bearish we will see as time goes on now let's go to uh, btc since we already covered this we looked at this we will go to btc on the intraday time frame i don't know how it looks like when i will be make when i make this video now um before when i was looking at it that's before i started uh, before i started making this video it was actually showing me something interesting on the four hourly chart i don't know if it's going to be showing the exact same thing when i publish this video it didn't even come into the buy zone right here before i think that was in our last predictive analysis video we talked about this top right here at twenty six thousand six hundred and nine dollars yeah and BTC reached $26,581, completely called our bluff and plummeted. And uh, ever since then, BTC has been 
plummeting. I also sent another forecast showing you that BTC could easily be headed for this particular region right here at uh, 26,619. I sent you this before. What was I looking for? I was looking for the Fibonacci level of this particular candle. So I target the candles in the past, yeah? If I see that we have, um, that we are going, for example, if I have a pattern showing me that we are going somewhere down here, now let me give you an example of this. Let me give you a better example. If I have something that looks like so, if I have something that looks like so, and um, this is your price action going on here, and this is a rising wedge, yeah? You have a breakdown from the wedge, a retest, and a move to the downside, yeah? And uh, I expect that this thing comes down to somewhere around here, but I don't know exactly where. I will look for an unretraced candle. So if I have like uh, the target that looks like so, and it's pointing me at this particular price, yeah, at this particular price zone right here, I'll be looking for an unretraced candle much like the unretraced candle somewhere around 35 36k i'll be looking for an unretraced candle when i get that unretraced candle i will then take its fibonacci levels i take the 0 0.786 fibonacci level or the 0 0.618 fibonacci level there is a very high likelihood that price will bounce exactly at that fibonacci level that's how i got this particular uh, level right here this particular level right here which i sent to you the other day on uh telegram i sent to you uh the other time now i even told you to cancel it because i did not know how price is going to react here and i shouldn't have cancelled it actually because it does look like this thing is going to uh go up why because we have this perfect actually kind of perfect uh, double bottom scenario here that has not been broken yet. So for now, it still looks okay. It looks very good actually because we have the first bottom right here and the second bottom that is higher than this first one. So uh, that's a higher low actually, which does suggest that price is starting to um, have an uptrend situation. So there is a good chance that this thing will actually go up from here. Yes, there is a good chance that it goes up from here. When we invert the chart, you see it like so. It becomes a double top. The second top should be lower than the first top. Ideally, it could be higher, but ideally, you want it like so. This is a good way uh, for it. So you have it right here. And on my uh, chart right here, I expect that this thing should come to somewhere around uh, 2670. Uh, three between 26703 and 26692 and uh, take off it might as well just take off from here but i would like for it to come in between this level to uh, 26703 to 26692 and um maybe we have a move to the upside. Now, these are my Fibonacci levels, yeah? And I took those from the 30 minute time frame. I think it could be the exact same thing. Yes, it would be the exact same thing on the four hourly time frame. Now on the 30 minute time frame, I'm using only the weeks, only the weeks of the candles, not the bodies. 30 minute, I use only the weeks. Daily, I use only the bodies. So uh, know that because uh, if you want to do the same as me, know that on the 30 minute I use only the weeks and on the daily I use only the bodies. It takes a lot of time to backtest and see which one works actually. So if you want to do it, know that that's what I'm using. So I would want to see a bounce around this region right here and then a move to the upside. That move to the upside could end somewhere around this region right here at 27 um 27191 right here or 27k actually we could have you know it's a whole figure so we could have a move to 27191 uh, and then a retracement and another move to 2759 uh 5, 27588 right here now 27588 will be retesting this trend line 
right here this particular trend line so it will be retesting this trend line right here which is where btc broke to the downside this is where we will want to see what happens next probably go to the downside from here most likely it will go to the downside but this if it beats this anyway but i think it will beat this because going above this level right here for this particular candle Going above this level, going above the 0 0.7827, 786, sorry, this video is getting very long. Anyway, if you're still here, I don't know, um, yeah, you know, uh, I just had to make a very long video. But later, I will be making shorter videos, you know, on updates and stuff. But I have to make like a macro video, it can't be a short video. So we actually see how good that thing is closing at the 0 0.236. It shows you how price respects each level. Like look at this, as I'm making this video, you will see how price is respecting this particular level right here. It doesn't just go through them that easily. Look at how it respects the 0 0.382 with this week and this week right here. It's almost like somebody is there doing this on purpose. I don't know, but yeah, it, it does look that way. Okay, so uh, yeah, we will. I will want it to come down to the 0 0.7 to uh, 0 0.618 around here, or the 0 0.786 Fibonacci level right here. I actually like that it's going down first. When you have this type of candle, uh, candle close, and the next candle is going down first, most likely it's retracing something. To go the other side towards the ending of that time frame so this is the this is the start of the four hourly time frame i would want it to be going down instead then close to the um, let's say uh close to the last hour of the four hourly time frame i would want to see it go up so that's basically how um what i would want to see okay so this looks like an inverted head and shoulders actually inverted head and shoulders you want a recovery of the second shoulder as well so okay let me not make much talk for now my idea will be that btc does something like so invalidation will be completely going below this low going below this low right here will not be good actually going below this low right here will most likely tank this thing to the downside it shouldn't go below this low right here to keep the move to the upside now even if it went it will stop somewhere around here which is another fibonacci level i took from candles back here but um ideally you should see this thing bounce anywhere in this levels right here between 26.67 uh 26.7 to 26.6 you want to see a bounce right there and then a move to the upside come on let's go let's go do this now before i uh close the show so basically that's it my uh, idea is that this thing will come back to 27.5 right here this is where we will probably make another video we will actually make another video and uh, talk about what is going on in the um, you know in the moment yeah at that time when it does come right here that's where we will make another video to update on where it goes next because it will be retesting this particular trend line right here which will mean a do or die type of situation if it can do something like so maybe if we can see something like so then we will know what to expect but yeah until it gets there we will see what's going to happen so uh some people have been asking me if i still think btc to 3k is possible if i still think we will go right up to 30 uh what 47k and yeah we have nothing to show um that suggests that we go up to 60k and we still have everything to show that we are going to 3k yeah we are just in a consolidation right here let me take these out we are in this consolidation right here. We had an inverted head and shoulders right here, yes? The target for this inverted head and shoulders on the weekly time frame is $36,000. Exactly $36,000. And we do have Fibonacci levels at that particular 36K with this on retraced weekly candle right here. So 
after the inverted head and shoulders, we have this uh, uh, consolidation right here. I mean, there is really not much I can say. Like, um, it's basically the same thing, yeah? We haven't done much. We have not broken any key levels here where people would be like, oh, we're going to 3K, we're going to this. No. If you look at this particular candle and you follow the exact same thing I've been saying throughout this entire this uh, entire video, this is what people don't say online, remember? I'm probably the only guy on media who is talking about retracement of 0 0.618, retracement of, zero, of uh, 0 0.786 Fibonacci level. This is what we are rooting for right here. Eventually, I would like to see a retracement of the six, uh, 0.618 of this particular candle or the retracement of the uh, 0.786 of this particular candle on the weekly time frame. Now, that's the same thing that we are seeing with this candle right here. That's how I gave you that target. The target I gave you the other time I sent you um, the targets on Telegram that, hey, um, buying around here and hoping that it goes higher could be um, an idea, something to do. Yeah, I was looking at the 0 0.786 Fibonacci level of this particular candle. It's the same thing with this one. 0 0.786 Fibonacci level take from here to here. From this of this particular candle take from here to here. And that's what you do all along that's how you can snipe particular levels but sometimes it will just go through it like hot knife through butter so you need some confluences to say that hey i really think it's going to go here so so far nothing has changed we are still in the bear market consolidating inside of this uh, uh trap basically and um yeah nothing has changed we are in the same position as ever so uh if we can actually move down to here and go higher great if we can just go higher from here great but i still do think that we will clear these lows right here i still do think that uh this is not the bottom just by my own analysis uh, BTC has always gone down by about 85% from its all-time highs. This time around, it's only been about 77%. If we look at the past bear markets, now that's a lot of information, but I have some videos on this BT BTC to 3K video, Bitcoin price history video. Um, you can watch that and then um, you will see what's going on. But it's basically the same thing. The same patterns that we are using to show how price is going to go up or down is the same thing right here. Yes, it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing um, happening right here. We have not broken any key level that you would say, okay, this thing is no longer going to go to 10,000. It's no longer going to go to 3,000 or that it's just going to go straight to 60,000. We have not done anything to suggest that it's going to happen that way. So for now, just be careful. If we get any news that shows that uh, this thing is just going to rally straight from here up to this level right here, be careful because all of these people inside of this candlesticks right here this is the weekly time frame yeah so this is months that people were buying and accumulating and then price just plummeted most of them are in losses when price comes back here they will most likely sell off when price comes back here you have to sell off first before they do because they will not waste any time. In the next video, we will be talking about the Bitcoin halving. What it is actually, how it has impacted price in the past, how it could possibly impact price now, and uh, what we should expect generally from BTC and from altcoins, because yes, it will affect altcoins. Remember, altcoins are valued in BTC. So if BTC's value goes up, the value of BTC in altcoins will also be priced higher in dollar terms so it will impact altcoins we will discuss this in the next video and until then stay safe